gather in the Lord's house on this fifth Sunday in the Lenten season. We gather to celebrate God's presence with us through the Holy Spirit. We gather to rejoice once again in our salvation. So St. John's family gather here in the sanctuary, those that watch from afar on this day. I say unto you all, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit dwell in each of your hearts on this blessed Lord's Day. Today we're going to celebrate the Lord. We're going to celebrate what he is doing in our lives here and now. We're on the home stretch of the Lenten season. We're fast approaching Palm Sunday and Holy Week. As the sun beams down on the earth, may the Spirit beam into our hearts this morning in our time of worship together. Brothers and sisters, we begin with songs of praise this morning. You pull out your chorus book on page 29 and then 33, or you can look to the screen above. We're going to sing together, Glory to the Lamb and Hallelujah, Praise the Lamb. If members of the praise team would come up and help us lead these songs, let us arise in body or spirit. Let us sing unto our Lord. say together the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty the maker of heaven and earth 
and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and of the life everlasting. Amen. children now. Be with us in this time of worship. Move amongst us so that we can celebrate who you are in our lives to the fullest extent. Bless us, O oh Father, when we look to your holy scriptures, when we pray together, when we praise you together, and as we fellowship and celebrate you together as a family of God. Bless this time, O oh Father, Blessed in the name of Jesus and by the power of your mighty hand. Amen. The first word of the Lord will come to us this morning from the prophet Isaiah. The 43rd chapter, verses 16 through 21. If you'd like to follow along with this scripture, it can be found on page 1127 or 1128, depending which pew Bible you're utilizing this morning. The first word of the Lord is going to speak to us today about trusting in the Lord's plan and not being held back by the things of the past, but walking each day with the Lord at our side. He has a plan for you. He has a plan for me. We have to trust in God and let him take hold. This morning, Lindsay will be reading the Holy Word. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together. And they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The animals honor, the wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I form for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. The second word of the Lord will come to us this morning from the 126th Psalm. If you'd like to follow along with that scripture, it's found on page 967 in your pew Bible this morning. It reminds us that we have to rejoice in what God has done to this point and what he is doing in our lives right now. We have to fully embrace the spirit and let God take hold within our hearts. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. 
those who go out weeping, carry seed to sow, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word on this his blessed day. Brothers and sisters, the scriptures remind us we have to trust in God, we have to follow his plan, we have to live into the spirit and know that Jesus walks with us day by day. This season of Lent, and as we head into Holy Week, as we look to the cross of Calvary, it should remind us always what God has done for us, and that he wants that relationship, that he wants to be a part of our lives. He showed us that because Jesus paid the cost for our salvation. Jesus brought us back to the Father. So let us now live in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, we respond to the word of the Lord this morning as we arise in body or spirit and we sing together hymn number 255 in our red hymnals, Jesus Paid It All. Sin had left a crimson stain, 
But Father God, you washed us white as snow. In your ultimate love, you showed us that you wanted us back through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Father God, help us to live more fully in his name and righteousness. As we come to you now, Father, asking forgiveness when we have sinned against you. And Father, have mercy upon your children when we sin against one another. Revive us and lift us up in the name of our brother and redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Be assured, brothers and sisters, by the blood of the Savior, the sins of the world are surely washed away. As we prepare now this morning to take up our offering, a reminder, there is still a basket at the doorway over by the ramp, but we have begun this Sunday with passing the offering plates once again. We slowly come back to some of our old traditions. And this morning, brothers and sisters, just a reminder of all your gifts and all your giving that you've been doing. Once again, we have been blessed to be able to send money to aid in Ukraine, the money we sent to World Vision. And those green buckets for our special offerings are available by the ramp entrance. We sent that original offering to Ukraine, and now we're collecting more money to send to the United Church of Christ Relief Fund. And we're collecting that each week at our Lenten dinners and have well over $1,000 for that. So we thank you for all your gifts to all of our mission offerings, the love ink baskets that were brought in last week, and to the support in all the ministries of St. John's. Brothers and sisters, let us keep in mind the gifts that God has given us. The greatest gifts are those of the Spirit. And let us pray to God that we can use them to the fullest extent. Let us bring our gifts unto the Lord. Jesus, unto all peoples and all nations, 
that they know of his grace, his righteousness, and his eternal love. Bless them by the mighty power of the Spirit, Lord, to bring light into all darkness. As we bless them now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters, those present here in the sanctuary, I invite you to look to the blue bulletin insert this morning. We're going to take some time now for congregational announcements, joys, and then share some prayer concerns before we go to the Lord in prayer together. We have quite a list of events coming up this week, so check out your church schedule. I'm going to just touch upon some of those announcements now. We remember with a new month, we have a new benevolence, and this month is Military Mothers, so please support that organization as they support our men and women that serve and protect us. We've been doing a great job with our monthly benevolences as we did last month for one great hour of sharing, so continue to support our special benevolences each month. A reminder, there's an all-team meeting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock in the gathering room. If you're on a ministry team, if you're interested in joining a ministry team, please try to attend that meeting tomorrow night at 7. On Tuesday, a reminder that we serve the community dinner for our community dinner crew here at the church at Trinity Lutheran. Also, coming up this week, of course, our last um, Lenten dinner and devotion time together will be this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. A reminder to the adult choir, we have some extra practice this week, next Saturday. And of course, a reminder to everyone that our annual Palm Sunday Easter Cantata is next Sunday. Um, it is two years in, in the making because it's been two years since we've been able to do that Easter Cantata that we began to work on. And we will be blessed to bring um, Is He Worthy to You next Sunday at our 10.30 a.m. service and also 7 o'clock in the evening. So please invite friends to come along as well. Also coming up on Saturday the 16th, we will have our annual egg hunt here at the church um, at 10.30 a.m. Um, we will have a lot of fun, um, a lot of great food and games for children and adults. So um, invite friends to that as well and join us. Um, behind the church at 10.30 a.m. on the 16th of April. Of course, be paying attention to the special services that will be coming up in Holy Week as well. And if you'd like to make a donation for the Easter egg hunt, bring your candy in and just drop it off at the office throughout the week or on Sunday morning as well. Also, there's a special event taking place today, and it's Young Life's event, and we support Young Life with one of our benevolences and in other ways, um, but today they're having a great fundraiser event, and if you're not aware of what Young Life is, it reaches out to kids in our community. Some are involved in churches, some are not, um, and it really reaches out to them and helps our youth grow closer together and, of course, close to Christ. Um, and we have, what, over 20-some kids going to the Young Life um, camp or retreat. We have 30 kids going to camp. 30 kids going to camp. And um, how many kids participate? Over 40, right? Over 40 kids. Yeah. Bible studies and programs. And so they have these meetings throughout the week. Um, and it, it really touches upon a lot of the kids in school that may not go to church otherwise. This fundraiser today is up at the fairgrounds. Um, there's going to be music and food. Um, it's out back of Jordan Hall, um, so you can go inside there as well because the home show is taking place up there. But the main fundraiser are these little discs, and they're calling it a cow patty toss. Um, but you can buy these little discs after church today um, from Debbie Johnson. She'll have them over here. Four up there today. Um, if you decide to attend, I know it's a little chilly out there, but um, you can throw the discs yourself. Or you can, what I would suggest, have the high school boys throw them. <laughs> and you have a chance to win $500 um, in that game. Um, but you can buy these discs. They're, what, $5 a piece, three, $10 a piece, or three for 20 If you'd like to buy them from Debbie after the service today, let us support uh, Young Life. Now, brothers and sisters, let's take time to look at our prayer list this morning, also on your blue sheet. 
I remind those that watch online this morning that our prayer list and our announcements are posted to the Facebook page and sent in our church email link each week. If you'd like to be a part of the church email link, please just contact the church office. Uh, we have many on our prayer concern list. I just want to touch upon a few before we go to the Lord in prayer together. Uh, we are continuing uh, to keep Mike Kalmanic in our prayers as he recovers. Uh, we're continuing to keep Javi Orbach in our prayers as she goes through treatments, as uh, well as Barry Barkman. And we also are keeping Galen Black in our prayers today. Galen was hospitalized this week, but he is back um, at his residence at Penn Knoll, and he is feeling better and resting. So we just pray for continued healing for Galen. We also have some people that are going through appointments and tests this week and possible future procedures. We're keeping uh, Todd Smith in our prayers as he has some tests this week, and also Lee Plummer as he has a doctor's appointment um, this week in Pittsburgh. We continue to keep all in prayers that are traveling. I know many of our church family have been traveling the last weeks. Uh, we keep Vicki and Tom in prayers as they return to us this week. Brothers and sisters, let us go to the Lord in prayer today. Father God, we are blessed at this very moment by your presence and by your love. We know you are with us, with us always. Lord, help us to celebrate what it means to believe in you. Help us to trust in your plan that you have for each of our lives. Help us to walk by faith as disciples a little better each day. And when we falter, may the guilt of sin not weigh us down, but may we break free from those chains of the oppressor. May we look to the Lord of salvation. May we live our best life in his name. Father God, we're praying that healing comes upon all those on our prayer lists, those we've mentioned this morning, and those we do not know of. There are so many needs. Father, we pray for those that are suffering from illnesses, that now have the stress of a new diagnosis, those that face uncertain futures, those that suffer from addictions, those that live in fear. Father God, come unto them all with your healing hand and arms of love. Father God, we think of those especially that do not know Jesus Christ. We pray that this Lenten season, this Holy Week, this day of resurrection may be a time of new birth for them, that they may turn their hearts unto you, that they may accept the grace of the Savior. Father God, help us to be better disciples of thy word, taking the message and the good news of Jesus unto all. Father God, we pray for our church here at St. John's, for the United Church of Christ and for the Church Universal, that we all look to Jesus as our head, that we follow his teachings of love. And Father God, enable us to live into the Spirit and have a great impact in this world. Father, we are mindful of those that live in fear and pain, those that are suffering now in Ukraine especially. We lift them up in prayer. Father, we pray for a solution, and that solution is peace and understanding. Father God, we pray for the refugees that stream across borders and those that take them in and care for them. Father God, we pray that there can be peace all over this world, that people stop turning against each other, but they start turning unto you. That is the only place we can find true peace. Father God, we are thankful we live in this free nation where we can come and worship you as we choose. Help us to be more grateful for all that we have. And Father God, we thank you for those that protect us near and afar and ask that your shield be upon them, that they know our gratitude and your love each day. Father, we pray for our leaders at all levels, 
that they first seek you out, that they humble themselves before you, and only then can they guide us in the right ways. Father, we look at the world and we can, we can think it's such a mess, but you give us the solution. You give us the remedy. You give us the antidote. And that is Jesus Christ. So may we turn our hearts unto him like never before as we continue this journey to the cross, the journey to the righteous man of Galilee, the journey to the great teacher and rabbi, the journey to the one who saved us on the cross, the journey to the one who conquered the grave, the journey to the one that is with us now and has taught us to pray unto you with the very words we now share together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have the opportunity now to attend the Lord's table to partake together in the sacrament of Holy Communion, to share in the elements which are the symbols of our salvation. I remind you, your elements are located in the pews this morning. They should be on the right side of your hymnals if you're in the main sanctuary. Take time now to prepare the elements for our time at the table together. Brothers and sisters, remember this is the table of grace in our tradition. This table is open to all, all who profess that Jesus Christ is Lord. For there is no power of this earth or beyond that can keep us from the grace and love of our Savior. The curtain in the temple has been torn in two. There is nothing to keep us from the love of Christ. So, if you trust in Jesus Christ, if you believe in his salvation, come to this table, seeking to be refreshed and revived through your Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Father God, consecrate now the elements of thine table, the unleavened bread, the symbol of the broken body, the wine the symbol of the blood that was shed. Father God, surround these elements by thine spirit. Fill our souls this day. Revive us and replenish us, each of your children who come to this table, each of your children who accept Jesus Christ. Amen. We are reminded that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. On the night of our Lord's betrayal, he gathered with his brothers in the upper room. They had gathered at the time of the Passover feast. They gathered for a simple meal, and our Lord took of the bread and he broke it. He shared it among his brothers, and he told them to take and eat, for this is my body is broken for you. Now after they had shared in this simple meal, Jesus took of the cup. He blessed it. He passed it among his brothers and he told them to take and drink of this cup. For this is my blood which shall be poured out for you. Now at the conclusion of the meal, the Lord told them to do these things as often as they might in his remembrance. And so we, the disciples, the apostles, the children of God, in this time and this place, 
do these things in remembrance of our Lord, our Savior, our King. The body of Christ, broken for you, taken each in his remembrance. Testament, the communion of the blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink in his remembrance. Let us pray. Father God, bless all who have partaken in this holy meal. Father God, may they live like never before by the power of your Spirit. May they be willing to share this message of love, the gifts of this table, with all who they encounter. As we go forward to the cross of Calvary, Father, bless us and keep us that we may walk in the ways of the Savior always. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Since we have returned to passing the offering plates, I want to remind everyone that there are visitor cards at the entryways of the church and the ends of the pews. There are also prayer request cards. And they can be placed in our offering plates at our time of giving. I also remind those of the children that the nursery and children's church rooms are always open throughout the service, that there are volunteers over there after our prayer time on regular Sundays and on Communion Sundays after our time of Communion together, and you're welcome to send your children over. Oh, brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord will come to us this morning from the Gospel of St. John, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 8. It's located on page 1670, if you'd like to follow with this scripture in your pew Bible this morning. I ask that you arise in body or spirit as you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord according to St. John. Now six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those who were reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance, the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples... Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. Now, he did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should have saved this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. May thanks be unto God. You may be seated. 
Today we're going to talk about celebrating the here and now, celebrating Jesus Christ and who he is in our lives and in this world. Today's lesson is about two different ways at looking at life, two different ways at looking who, at who Jesus is. Jesus had come to the house of Lazarus, Martha and Mary. They loved Jesus. He came there for this meal. He's on his way to the cross. He's on his way to what will take place in Jerusalem, the crucifixion. On his way, he stops with these friends, those that loved and cared for him to have this meal together. Mary loved him. Mary believed in him. She showed us. She took this expensive perfume. She took it and wiped it upon his feet, wiping it with her hair. Now in the ancient world, when a guest would come into the house, would clean their feet, at least the servants would. It was a show of servanthood, and in this case, it was showing how much Mary appreciated Jesus. She knew who he was. She believed in him, and it was a sign of love. Now to some, and to Judas, who was in the room, it was a little lavish. Maybe a little extravagant, but extravagant love. Maybe to some, too lavish, too over the top for this moment and this time. At least that's how Judas Iscariot felt. Judas, as you remember, the one that will betray Jesus with a kiss. So we have two ways of looking at this situation, two ways of looking at what took place in this house and at that meal. We have the perspective of Mary, of Bethany, and we have the perspective of Judas, the scary, the disciple. First, we take a look at how Judas felt. How did Judas Iscariot feel about what Mary was doing? As she took out this expensive perfume, this, this nard, worth a year's wage, and she placed it upon Jesus' feet. She wiped them with her hair. Judas was not having anything of it. This is how Judas felt, that Mary was wasting time, that Mary was wasting effort, that she was wasting resources and money that could be used for something else. And on the surface, what Judas says sounds pretty good, right? Why would we waste this expensive perfume to wipe off someone's feet when it could be used for the poor? Sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. But the scripture tells us Judas did not have the greatest of intentions. The scripture tells us that Judas was not worried about the poor. Judas was worried about how much money was left in the money bag so he could skim off the top. That's all Judas was worried about. He was worried about earthly things. Even if Judas' intention was all about the poor, all giving the money, that, that's a godly act, but he's only concerned with earthly matters. And certainly, he's consumed with how much time there is, how much effort there is, and most of all, how much money is left for him to steal. That's what Judas is concerned with. A good comparison to how it is if we live into the ways of the world versus living the godly way. Living into the ways of the world, we're worried about how much time we have. That's why a lot of people don't have time to get to church. We've got other things that are more important. That's why people don't always have enough time to give to God like they should, because the world tells them other things are important. That's why people often only put effort into things that will benefit them. Judas was putting effort into this argument because it would benefit him if there's more money in the money bag. And our world, as we know, is consumed with money, power, prestige, beauty. 
All these kinds of things. Judas walked in the ways of the world, and Judas would be trapped by the ways of the world. He would find himself hanging from a tree after he betrayed Jesus out of his guilt. If we walk in the ways of the world, if we walk in the ways of Judas, it will lead to our own destruction. But we have a choice. Mary gives us the other choice today. Let's see for ourselves how Mary feels about this situation. What does Mary have to say, and how is it different in the way that Mary acted? Different from how Judas felt. She listened to Jesus. She believed in the truth about Jesus. She appealed to Jesus. She went to him in prayer. She sought him out for comfort. And she sacrificed to Jesus. She wanted him in her life. You see this pouring out of the expensive perfume, this sign of servanthood and love as she wiped Jesus' feet, it was a sign of discipleship. It was a sign of commitment. And it was a sign that she recognized who her Savior was. And she recognized what was important. She was celebrating Jesus in the here and the now. She was celebrating the presence of her Lord and Savior right there in the room with her. And she was showing how much she loved and appreciated and was dedicated to him. Mary was walking in the godly way. If we walk in the godly way, even though we're going to make mistakes, even though we're going to stumble, he picks us up and he carries us all along the way. He makes straight the paths and he fills us with the power and the gifts of his spirit so that we can get through life. So today, are you walking in the worldly way? Are you walking with the thoughts of Judas Iscariot? Or are you walking in the godly way with the thoughts of Mary of Bethany? Are you dedicated to your Lord? Will you give him more time? Are you finding ways to spread his grace and love to more of your brothers and sisters? You see, God has done the hard work of salvation at the cross. He has given us the free gift. All he wants is a relationship with you and me, and he wants us to celebrate that relationship. How do we celebrate in the here and now? By taking his message to all the world by sharing his gifts and by loving him more fully, not just going through the ritual of communion, but living in to the communion of God. You see, it's not about how we do communion. It's not about how many times a month we, or a year we take it. It's not about the bread or the wine or the juice that we use. It's about whether you really feel it in your heart and you live it out. Take out the earthly things and turn to the godly things. Let Jesus take control and truly celebrate the here and now. Celebrate what God has done for you and how he's a part of your life. And let it shine so your brothers and sisters can see it. So you can be an agent of change in this troubled world. You see, the world is filled with pain and division and unrest. And do you know why? It's because people aren't doing this. They're not celebrating Jesus. There's a little song that's in our chorus book that says, Celebrate Jesus, Celebrate. These very words. We're going to sing it after Easter. When we continue to celebrate the resurrection. Are you celebrating Jesus today in the way you live? In how you look upon your life? I'm not saying the world isn't hard or that life isn't tough because we all know it is. But how are you going to get through it? Are you going to worry about what the world tells you you need? Like Judas? Are you going to live into the fear of the devil? Or are you going to live into the truth and the light of your Savior, Jesus Christ? Because if you don't have him in your heart, you need to get him in your heart now. You need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and be filled with his grace. Does that mean every day gets better? It may seem like it gets tougher. But if he's at your side, 
He pulls you through to the promised land. He gets you through life, and you've got to trust that he has a plan for you and for me. He has a plan for all of us, even when we don't understand it, even when we're impatient. Because he loves you. He celebrates you. That's why he came and died on the cross for you. And now it is time for us to celebrate him and bring his love to this hurting world. You know, next Sunday we start that journey of Holy Week. We celebrate in song, and our cantata this year says, Is he worthy? The refrain back will be, He is. Now, are we living out the message of our worthy Savior and his love in our lives? Do we head into Holy Week reflecting upon what God has done and more willing than ever? to take his message of grace and love to our brothers and sisters. Once again, not just going through the rituals and just the celebrations, but actually living day by day with the Lord in your heart before you take actions, before you make decisions, before you open your mouth. Do you go to the Lord first? Do you allow him to be your guide? Do you celebrate him with your actions and your words? How can we do that better? How can we live more fully into the Spirit? You know, you can feel physically old and feeble and worn out, and you can live in this life for several more decades. You can be bright, young, and filled with strength, and you can be dead tomorrow. Do you have Jesus Christ in your life? Are you celebrating what life means? Life doesn't mean the things of this world. Life doesn't mean hurting each other or getting the upper hand the way the world teaches us. Those are the ways of the devil. Life means loving each other, enjoying every moment as if it is your last. There was a song that came out, and I looked it up, and it's amazingly a lot longer ago than I thought. I was a senior in high school. It was 2004. A song by Tim McGraw. And maybe you remember the words of it. Because it, he's a country singer, but it was all over the radio. It was like a crossover song. The title of it was Live Like You Are Dying. The premise for this song was that someone had been diagnosed with cancer, and actually it was a misdiagnosis. But guess what? Once they were diagnosed, they started living a whole different way started living their life a whole different way. And Tim McGraw said it also reminded him of his father, Tug McGraw, and the moments he had with him before he had a massive heart surgery, eventually lost his life. Are we living each day like we are dying? Are we living each moment to its fullest? But I want to take it even beyond the message of that song. Are we living each day like we are dying to the world and living to the Savior? Dying to the world and living to the Savior. Because there will come a day when you take your last breath here on earth. And then your life eternal begins. But why are we waiting for that? Why aren't we celebrating here and now? Why are we living this life to its fullest. So when we stand before the throne and he says, well done, good and faithful servant, we know we live each moment in the here and the now. Let's pray. Father God, help us to celebrate what Jesus has done for us each day. And moreover, help us to use those gifts of the Spirit that sustain us to, to take that message of grace and love to a hurting world here in our little community, here from our little churches, but far more out into a world that is filled with darkness and needs Jesus Christ in it. Father, with your power, we can conquer our fears. With your power, we can take courage. With your power, we can not only be refreshed at the table, the Lord's table, but we can be empowered to celebrate Jesus 
like never before. We are thankful, Father, for the gifts of the table. We are thankful for the cross. And Father God, bless us as we go out into the world today. In Jesus' name. If you are in need of special prayer this morning, I invite you forward to the altar, or please see a prayer elder or myself after worship today. Remember to get your discs after church if you'd like to donate to Young Life. And as we prepare to go forth this morning, our hymn of sending and sustainment in the spirit of the light of Christ, it asks us, and are we reminding ourselves in what we take our glory? Do we find our glory in the cross of our Savior or the ways of the world? I pray that you have Jesus in your heart and you glory in his cross always. Let us arise in body or spirit, turn in our hymnals to number 256, sing together in the cross of Christ I glory. accept Jesus Christ into our hearts. Are you living into that peace in the here and now? Are you living into that celebration of who Jesus Christ is day by day? Remember, the work has been done at the cross. It's been accomplished. You've been justified. And now you live into the Spirit and you are sanctified day by day. But what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do this week? What are you going to do for the Lord this week to celebrate Him and to bring His love into the hearts of the lost? Let us live for God like never before. Let us pray. Father God, send us forth from this place in your strength and wisdom. Brother Jesus, our Savior and King, 
Send us forth from this place in your grace and love eternal. Holy Spirit, be with us as we depart. Empower us to celebrate Jesus. Celebrate. Amen. Thank you.